Penpot have recently released their newest feature, which is the Design Tokens feature. Now, this is incredibly useful if you're a designer working with CSS frameworks and you're kind of used to working with variables inside your designs. We can kind of replicate a similar workflow inside Penpot. Now, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of how this works. I will give you some links in the description down below so you can check out to get maybe a little bit more detailed look at some of the features, including naming conventions and so on. But once you understand how this works, I think it'll speed up your workflow considerably. And also, if you were using this in conjunction with your CSS framework, it's going to speed up the design and the actual build process. So let's take a look at how these work. So once you're inside Penpot, what we need to do is go into the new feature on the left hand side called tokens. I've already created a couple of tokens and I've set them up inside a standard global token set. We can create multiple sets if you want to have light mode, dark mode, various different options for very different parts of your design. Like I say, super simple for this example. We've also got a couple of tokens that I've created. I've got some border radius tokens and I've got some color tokens, including shades. You also see we've got things for dimensions, opacity, rotation, and so on. We'll take a quick look at some of those and also show you how you create these tokens and how we can use mathematical functions to make these tokens a lot more flexible. So let's take a quick look. Let's just add in a simple rectangle. There we go, a plain old boring rectangle. Now, if you were working with CSS variables, you'll know that once you select a variable and apply it to a class or apply that variable to the relevant part of your design, the corner radius, for example, border, those types of things, it will immediately pick up that value. This is exactly the same. So if we come over and I just select my radius M, you'll see we now get the medium radius rounded corners. If I do extra large, you can see same kind of thing with a slightly different value. Put it back to medium, come over to our colors, select primary, boom, we now have a green primary color. The cool thing about this is, as we've already seen when we work with variables and so on, we can change the value there and everywhere that references that value will change accordingly. Same thing applies to tokens. Let's just duplicate this. So we've got two copies of the exact same thing. Both are referencing the primary color for their background color. Let's right click and choose to edit that token. And from there, let's change this color to something completely different. Let's go for red and click Save. Both of those now update to show that change in color, exactly the same as we have with variables inside a CSS framework. So pretty cool. You also notice that if we right click on one of these, we have the option to, in this example, choose the fill color and apply that primary color to it or choose the stroke. So if we go with the accent color and I right click, choose stroke, we now get an orange stroke around this second square. You can probably just about make it out. If we select it and make those a little bit bigger, you'll get a better example of what's going on. So you can see how that changes. And again, if we come back into our primary, change the color there, set this to something like blue, and hit save, you can see those are affected, but the outline stroke, which is using a different color, is not affected. It couldn't get much simpler than that. So there's the basics of working with those tokens. So if we want to create a token, it's very simple. Click on the plus in the relevant section, so your border radius, colors, dimensions, and so on. Click on the plus, give it a name, call this one tertiary, add a color in. Let's go for something like a green color, click save. We now have our green tertiary color. You kind of get the idea. There's nothing rocket science here. Let's take a look at the border radius and see how this is working, because this is a little bit more interesting. If we click on the border radius for the first one, which is our radius base, I'm using this as the base value that everything else is going to be multiplied or divided by. So if we edit this token, I've set this to an arbitrary value of 16. Let's set it to 8 for now. We'll hit save. And anywhere that references it, you can see the corner shear have now become smaller because that base reference influences all the other radius settings. They all come from that. So if we go to radius large and we open this up and edit our token, you see we're using this radius.base, which is the name of our base value, eight pixels, and we're multiplying it by two. And you can see the syntax is basically you wrap whatever the name of this particular token is inside curly brackets, and then you do your calculation outside it. Simple as that. So it'll tell you there the resolved value is 16. In other words, the base value of 8 multiplied by 2 gives us 16. 
you don't have to just use that. You can come in. We've got radius small. We can edit our token there, and you can see we're using this to divide by two, which gives us a resolved value of four. Very, very simple. But the beauty of this is, as we've seen, if we make a change to that base value, so we edit that token, and we set this to something crazy like 32, you'll see everywhere now reflects based upon that. So if we hover over the large, for example, it will tell us that this is the radius base times two, resolved value, 64 pixels. So if you start working this way, again, this is very similar to working with variables inside a kind of CSS framework. You may set your base value for your typography, your medium, for example, which would be a 16 pixels, and then everything that goes above or below will be calculated based upon that initial base value. This is working in exactly the same way. So let's delve into some of the other tokens we have available. So for example, we've got this opacity. If we open this up, you can give it a name. We'll call it 100%, and we'll put in a value of 100%. So you can see that now is going to be fully opaque. Let's add another one in. We'll call this one 50%, and we'll do 50% for the value, and click Save. So now if we select our first block, click 50%, we now get 50% transparency. 100%. But again, we can easily use the calculations inside you if we wanted to. You could come into your 50%, for example. We'll edit that token. So now we need to do, we're going to use the alias. So we're going to change this value from here, and we're simply going to put in our curly brackets, the name of the root. In other words, this is 100%. Close our curly bracket, and then we can put the calculation we want. Then we're going to divide it by 2, which is going to give us that 50% transparency. Hit Save. And you can see this will now have the same effect. So 100% full color, 50%, 50% transparency. You see how it kind of works. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And you can do the same thing, for example, with your sizing and your spacing. So let's come into spacing. And from there, we could just say we could set a base value. So we'll just call this spacing.base. Enter a value. And let's just say 8. Could we work on that 8 pixel grid system? Hit save. So there's our base value. So now all we need to do is create a new one call this, start with space M. We're going to use that sort of option. That gives the calculation of 8. Hit Save. Create another one. We'll call this large, for example. We'll multiply that by 2. You can see we've got 16, and you can carry on, and you can carry on, and carry on. So this is really just the basics of what you can do. But what you can hopefully see is that it's very easy to set up all these tokens export them as a JSON file, so you've always got that sort of starting point you can load in, and then just mimic exactly what you have inside your CSS framework, giving you the ability to flexibly and easily mimic the colors, mimic the spacing, mimic the sizing, the border radius, all those kinds of things just by using these tokens. And if you need to make a change in the example of your radius and your sizing and so on, you can simply change that radius base all of the other ones will update in real time, and every way inside your design that references those will immediately update and change accordingly. It's so quick and so easy, but like I say, this is just the basics. I would recommend checking out the videos that go into more detail about how to name these in a specific way if you want to work with a dedicated sort of naming convention. Also shows you how you can set up multiple different iterations so you can have a light mode and a dark mode and so on. These are all super useful and cool things. But if you'd like me to cover Penport in more detail in future videos, let me know in the comment section down below. Or check out my previous videos. You can check those out here. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.